Hey everyone, hope you're all having a lovely day today. I won't lie, I slept in this. I'm just way too comfy to fully get changed out of it. So I've got another true crime video for you today. I'm really excited about this one. This bird, I'll tell you what. This story to me just kind of sounds like a made up sleepover kind of story. It's really strange in so many ways. So there's nothing I can really say without completely telling you straight away everything that happened so I'm just gonna get into it right now. So at the very centre of this case there is a character called Slenderman and you might be thinking well what is a fictional character got to do with this actual real life true crime case and I will tell you. When Slenderman was first created he was created for a photoshop competition on a website called Something Awful. A man who called himself Victor Serge on the website, whose real name was Eric Nutton, won the competition with Slenderman. And in the Photoshop competition, Victor Serge posted two photos, one of children playing and one of children looked like they were running away. And in the background, you can see a really tall man with no face, he's completely pale and he's wearing a black suit and that was Slenderman. This Photoshop competition happened in 2009 and from then, Slenderman just got bigger and bigger. He completely took off as a character. People started writing stories about him, which are known as creepypastas. So that's like a horror story that's deliberately written to, you know, be scary, to sound real. And every single time people wanted to add to that, they would just copy and paste the story and kind of tweak the bits that they thought could be made more scary or more believable. And then from there, Slenderman just went huge. People started creating more stories about when they'd seen Slenderman or people genuinely believed that they had seen Slenderman when they were out in the forest. Slenderman's meant to lure people away, mainly children and no one really knows what happens to them. I've seen in some stories that they are pinned to trees. I'm, I don't know what he does with them but he has these big kind of um tentacles that come out of his back and he's meant to strangle you i've seen some stories say it's hard to kind of pinpoint what his original story actually was because of how much he has taken off but long story short he was in the back of all these photos and he would stalk his victims there was a whole other side to this story that slender man had this different origin where he was a boy who was bullied for how tall he was and people started feeling sorry for him. Some people were like, well, maybe Slenderman's actually a guardian angel and he doesn't do bad things. Maybe he's, you know, rescuing kids who maybe aren't treated well or are lost. Maybe he does that and people have kind of given him this bad name. Even people who had YouTube channels were making documentaries about him. They were creating videos of really believable sightings. Maybe not now, it's not believable, but back then in, you know, around 2009, especially for younger kids, it looked as though it was real. It's like how I saw Slenderman and I caught him on camera. And with all these sightings, the camera usually malfunctions and goes all fuzzy whenever he comes near. I remember watching a Slenderman series from a channel called Marble Hornets. I don't know if they're still going, but that was the only thing kind of Slenderman related I ever saw around that time. It's the only thing I actually remember. I was never into it. I think I was a little bit too old to kind of believe that that was real. I don't know if anyone saw recently about the Momo character that was popping up everywhere. Basically it started out as like a model I think and with the whole Momo thing kids started seeing their pop up in videos and believe that she was real was really scared and I'm not surprised like that is terrifying. I think a lot of younger teenagers who were at that awkward stage would also relate to him with the stories about him being bullied and being an outcast and stuff. People didn't like him because he looked strange but really he wasn't all that bad. So there was a lot of kids that believed that Slenderman was real and that is how this case happened. On Saturday May the 31st in 2014 at about 10 to 10 in the morning the police in Waukesha, Wisconsin received a 911 call. This call was from a man called Greg Steinberg who'd been riding his bike through the forest and he ignored a closed road sign and he carried on down it and I'm just going to play you the 911 call. 911, what's the address? Your emergency. Waukesha County Linnium, transfer over a caller on Big Bend at the dead end just south of Rivera. Okay. Came upon a 12-year-old female. She appears to be stabbed. She appears to be what? Stabbed. Stabbed? Correct. 
Okay. Sir, you still there? Yes. Hi, sir. So, is are you with this 12-year-old female? Yes. She says she's having trouble breathing. She said she was stabbed multiple times. Stabbed multiple times? <laughs> yeah. Okay, sir, are you with her right now? Yes. Is she awake? She's awake. Is she uh, breathing? Yeah, she's breathing. She said she can take shallow breaths. She's alert. Okay, stay with her. We're sending the police department. Don't hang up, okay? Oh, Hold on just a minute. Up. Don't hang up. Okay. Okay. Hold on just a minute, sir. We're sending officers. Oh. Is there any assailant around? Ah, uh, I didn't even look. I don't see anybody. It's a dead end. Okay, stay, stay right with her, sir. Is she on the ground or is she standing up? No, she's laying on the grass. Laying on the grass. Stay right with her. Just let me know if she's... Is remaining conscious or not, okay? Okay. Is there any bleeding going on? Her clothing has got blood on it. Where are the wounds? Do you see where the wounds are? No, I'm, I don't know if I should be rolling her over and checking or not. Do you know where? Okay, just stay with her and just let me know if she's conscious or alert or stops breathing or anything. Hold on, I'm going to talk to the ambulance. Police are also in route. Okay, thank you. I'm bothering you at all? I'm shade? Okay. Okay. Just keep her in that position. Just let me know on her breathing. Okay. What's your name, sir? My name? Your name. My name. Okay, were you just passing through? Yes. Okay, and you found her and she was just laying there? Yes. Okay. Okay, so you see any active bleeding or blood spurting out or anything like that? No, unless it's underneath her. I just see dry blood. Okay, just dried blood. Okay. Okay, is she still breathing? Is she still alert? Yeah. Okay, stay with her. Yep. Stay I, with her. I, Keep an eye on her. Hold on just a minute. Do not hang up, sir. Okay, I will not. Who did that to you? Or don't you want to talk? And she didn't say who did this or how it happened? I don't know if she wants to be talking. I started to ask okay. her and then... That's okay. If she's... You try to save her energy, I think. Okay, but you see nobody else around you. Are you clearly visible when they pull down that road towards the dead end that they'll see you? I'm, I'm sorry, I couldn't are you, hear you. Are you clearly visible when they come down there so they see you? I'm going to have, I've got a gold flashlight on my bicycle. I'll shine that towards any emergency vehicle I see. And I'll be, I'll be standing in the middle of the road. You're in the middle of the road? And where is she, in the side of the road? Yeah, she's on the grass. It's a okay. little a okay. little trail I take on my bicycle. Okay. Okay, see. So don't hang up, sir. Just stay right with me. Okay. And let me know immediately if you see anything else suspicious in the area, a car, a person, anything. All right. Keep your eyes open. Was there anyone coming or leaving or any cars coming or leaving when you came upon her? Um, no. Nothing? No. So were you on foot walking by or did you pull up in a car? Bicycle. You are on a bicycle? Yeah. How did you see her? Did you just... She's right in the middle of the little path I take. Middle of the little path. Okay. Yeah. There's a squad car coming now. Okay. The squad car coming? Okay. Flag yeah. the squad car down. Protect her. There he's coming. Does she have a bike or anything with her? No, I don't see it. One sandal is off. But, you know, maybe three feet away from her. Okay. Flag that officer down. I'm going to let you here. go. Okay. You meet with him right now, okay? Okay, thank, thank you. you. This little girl was 12-year-old Peyton Lutner. Luckily, ambulance and police came, and as she was being put into the ambulance, she was able to tell detectives that her friends did this to her. I don't know how she was even getting words out, but she managed to tell them. Her two so-called friends were her classmates who were the same age as her, Morgan Geyser and Anissa Weir. Peyton and Morgan had known each other since they were in kindergarten together, and they'd been best friends since they were in fourth grade. So I think that's around 10 years old, I think. I know that they're, they're like a year ahead of us. How old are you in year four? Yeah, I think they're about nine or 10 in, in fourth grade. I'm sorry if I'm wrong, but they've been best friends for a few years. Morgan was described by her mum as being always quirky and someone who marched to the beat of her own drum. She was described as a happy child who was intensely creative. There's an interview with her mum when she says that they noticed Morgan didn't react how you would expect a child to react over certain things. They were scared to watch Bambi with her when she was young because, spoiler, Bambi's mum dies and it's like a famously sad scene for anyone who hasn't seen it. Bambi's mum's obviously telling him to run and then she is shot by the hunter and apparently Morgan 
was just not bothered about the fact that the mum had died but was saying you know run Bambi save yourself and shouting that at the telly instead. Her mum said there was more experiences like this, this was just an example but I don't know if 100% um, you would know what was going on if you were that young if like death hadn't been explained to you would you know that that was what was going on or would you just think like the mum was lost? I don't know. I think with some kids who were maybe too young to watch that, it might just go over their heads and maybe that's why she wasn't upset. But yeah, just throwing that out there. Morgan's mum and dad knew that she was interested in Slenderman, but they kind of said, well, I was interested in, you know, Stephen King. I, I was taking out copies of it when I was that age. It's just liking, you know, scary stories and liking darker things. They just thought, you know, she's interested in scary stories. What's the harm in that? Anissa started getting Morgan's bus home so Morgan now had a friend who lived really close and who she was able to get the bus to and from school with every single morning. Anissa and Morgan both struggled making friends, they were both picked on. Especially Anissa, she was described as being a follower. Anissa had a cat called Tiger and she was part of the choir in school. Her parents had divorced two years before the incident and she spent a lot of time up in a room but her dad said he knew what she was doing in there all the time. There was no closed doors in their house unless she was practicing for choir which she did quite a bit. He said she'd be facetiming people from school maybe if they were working on a project together but at around half seven he'd say you know enough come and spend time with your family and he said she never argued about that. Peyton and Anissa, so both Morgan's separate friends, were introduced to each other and they weren't really friends, you know, by themselves. They were just kind of friends because they were friends with Morgan. And Peyton always thought that there was a bit of jealousy with Anissa towards her because she'd been Morgan's friend for years and Anissa was the new one in the group. So while Morgan and Anissa were getting the bus, they'd talk about things they liked, just things that they were into. Anissa's dad said that she did spend a lot of time on the internet and on her iPad. During one of their bus journeys, Anissa started telling Morgan about all of the creepypasta stories that she'd read. I can't say creepy pa creepypasta, it just doesn't come out my mouth properly. You know what I mean. She started telling her all about Slenderman and what he is, what he does. And when Anissa told Morgan about this, Morgan said that when she was little she thought that she saw Slenderman so she became really interested in him and started doing her own reading too. So when they go home they'd both get on you know their iPads or whatever and they'd look up all the different stories that they could find about Slenderman. Anissa found out in one of the stories that she'd read that you could be picked by Slenderman to be a proxy which is like a servant to him. And apparently you don't get to choose that you're a proxy, he chooses you. So you have to do something to make yourself worthy to Slenderman to be a proxy. Like it's kind of like a test to be like, look what I've done, I am committed. Kind of like a weird cult kind of thing. I don't know. Anissa said to Morgan that she wanted the pair of them to go and be proxies. She really liked the sound of it. She wanted to go and live where apparently all of the creepypasta characters lived in this mansion in Nicolette National Park where this mansion was said to just be. I don't really know why you'd want to go and live with a load of monsters, I'm assuming they are. Who knows, but they really liked the idea of that. And Morgan said, well, we'll have to kill Peyton to make ourselves worthy. They said that they wanted to prove the skeptics wrong so they heard so many people saying that Slenderman wasn't real and to them he 100% was real. So they thought if they were to become proxies they'd be able to say to everyone look we did this we've become proxies to this creature that you all thought was made up but look he isn't and that was their plan. So every day on the bus to and from school and sometimes in school as well in class the girls would be planning how to murder one of their friends. This went on for about six months and they made sure to whisper when they were on the bus talking about it or they'd use code words like for knife they used cracker, for kill they used itch, things like that. And after about six months of planning on the 30th of May Morgan's birthday party was coming up. The three of them were going to go skating, they were going to have pizza and then they were going to have a sleepover in Morgan's so they decided that that was the perfect time to kill Peyton. Morgan and Anissa have been kind of egging each other on with this and they've been winding each other up. They were still doing all of their reading outside of planning together. So they were telling each other that if they didn't do this, that Slenderman would come and kill them and kill their families as well. 
So their first plan was to wait until the sleepover when Peyton was asleep. They were gonna put duct tape over her mouth, stab her in the neck, and then cover her up with loads of covers and then run and, you know, go on the run, walk miles to that mansion in the park. They even got as far to plan the alarm that they were gonna wake up to to do it. Morgan had set an alarm for two in the morning on her iPad and she'd put headphones on so it'd only wake her up. Then she was gonna wake Anissa up and they were both gonna do it. They decided they weren't gonna do it that night and they wanted to give Peyton one more day to live. The girls woke up at about half five altogether and they just started talking. They started playing with like putty or slime in the room and then they started playing dress up. And while Peyton was trying on a princess dress in the bathroom, the two of them were working on their plan B on how they were gonna murder her. They had donuts and strawberries for breakfast all together and then they asked Morgan's mum if the three of them were able to go and play in the park. So Morgan's mum didn't see any reason why they couldn't and said yeah. But on the way out, Morgan took a knife from the kitchen and she hid it. I've seen some police say that she hid it in the waistband of her pants, some that say that she hid it in her coat. But either way, on the way to the park, she showed Anissa and she like opened whatever it was or lifted up her coat and showed her the handle of it. The girls went into the bathroom that was in the park because that was the next place that they decided they were going to try and kill Peyton and it goes through me so much because they picked this place because there was a drain in the floor so there was somewhere for the blood to go down after Peyton had been stabbed and that level of planning and that kind of mentality at that age is terrifying. A lot of adults who commit murders I feel don't plan that well, it's horrible. Their plan was to sit Peyton on the toilet, stab her, lock her in the cubicle so no one would know where she was and then they were going to run away to the mansion. They wanted to kill Peyton when she was asleep or unconscious because they'd read that if you kill someone when they're awake you see yourself in their eyes and at first I was like yeah that makes sense like you wouldn't want to remember looking in someone's eyes as they died so horrible to think about but I was like I get that but then as I read on it was because you'd see yourself in their eyes and you don't want to be killing yourself and I was like that, that does what? Anissa asked Peyton if she would go to sleep in the bathroom and Peyton was obviously like no I, I don't need to go to sleep right now so Anissa pushed Peyton really hard in the face or like pushed her or punched her I'm not sure but Either way, she hit her hard in the face, so Peyton's head smacked the, the concrete behind her and she was obviously really hurt by that, but they were trying to knock her out so she would, you know, go to sleep. I can't imagine how confused Peyton must have been at this point, like she really didn't know what was going on. Morgan and Anissa went into a stall and they were kind of passing the knife like back and forward to each other, saying that they couldn't do it and the other one had to be the one to do it. Morgan said that she couldn't do it, she was too scared and Anissa said she had to give her a hug and calm her down and then she also said that she had to pet her like she was a cat because her nickname was Kitty and she said that she acted like a cat. It's horrible because their planning is so like beyond the years but then they're like 12 being like oh I'm like a cat and I do this like a cat and it's just it's very that they show their age and then they're also planning to kill someone so their blood goes directly down a drain and there's less blood to clean up it's it's so weird this whole case is so strange like that the three girls left the toilet cubicle and they decided that they were going to play hide and seek and Peyton said she didn't want to I'm not surprised they needed to get Peyton to play for this to work so Morgan said that if she played hide and seek Peyton could choose the next game so she agreed Morgan I think was the one counting and Anissa started pulling Peyton further and further into the woods and she was trying to get her to like lie on the floor and cover herself with leaves and she was just like no let's just hide normally. Morgan came to look for them and she found Anissa first or Anissa just you know came out and made herself known. She handed Anissa the knife and said you need to do it because you know where all the soft spots are and Anissa handed the knife back to Morgan and just said, no, you do it, go ballistic, go crazy, make sure she's down. Morgan said that she wouldn't do it until Anissa told her to. So Anissa took a few steps away. She said she got to about five feet away from Morgan and Peyton. And then she just said, now. Morgan, Morgan turned to Peyton and said, don't be afraid, I'm only a little kitty cat. 
Morgan sat on Peyton's legs, got really close to her and whispered, I'm sorry, then started stabbing her. She was stabbed 19 times in the arms, legs and torso. I mean, even once is horrific to be stabbed, but 19 times. I can't imagine like how long that must have taken. I could, I shouldn't do these because every single time I'm just like, how do, how does one get to that point? <laughs> Ooh. All through all this time, Peyton's saying to Morgan, I trusted you, I hate you. And she's also saying that she can't see and she can't breathe. And she just kept repeating it over and over again. Peyton miraculously stands up after all this and started trying to like walk out of the forest towards the road to get away. But Anissa turns her around and like kind of, you know, ushers her in the wrong direction. Then she tells her to lie down because she'll lose blood slower that way. Peyton's left on the floor repeating that she can't see and she can't breathe and the girls both left like at an angle so Peyton didn't know they were there anymore. They said that they were going to go and get help but then just kind of, I imagine if she's lying down they kind of went that way and just left her lying there after they attacked her. So this 12 year old with 19 stab wounds manages to get herself up again and walk after her friends have just left her and she finds a bit of grass where she can lie down. Like this little girl is incredible. How on earth do you do that? She can't see, can't breathe, she's covered in blood, she's got 19 stab wounds but she is making sure that she gets herself out which is just amazing. That's when Greg, the man on his bike, came across Peyton who was lying in the grass. And bless her, she actually said to him, can you help me please, I've been stabbed multiple times. Greg called 911, Peyton's clothes were all cut off her and she was put on the stretcher and put in the ambulance. And at the hospital, again, she was able to confirm that Morgan did this and that there was another girl there and it happened in the woods. Detectives straight away went to Peyton's house and said, is Peyton home? I don't know why they asked this, maybe it's just in case they've got the wrong person. And her mum said no. Then they said, was she at a sleepover last night? And her mum said, yes, why, what's happened? The detectives explained to her mum that she was alive, but she'd been stabbed. So obviously, like you leave your kids at a sleepover and they get stabbed. How do you react to that? So her mum and dad just went straight away to the hospital and they saw Peyton just before she went down to surgery. Her mum said she was pale as anything. She was crying again, she couldn't breathe. And she was just really upset that this had happened to her. Detectives had Morgan's name and knew that she was with another girl so they had to find them because right now no one knew where they were and they were missing. The police then went to Morgan's house and asked Morgan's mum where they were and she was like they're in the park they're playing and the police just said well there's been an incident and one of the girls has been hurt. Morgan's mum said that she was with Anissa so then they were able to get in contact with Anissa's parents. They also searched Anissa's house, I think, to make sure that Morgan and Anissa hadn't ran to there, but there was no sign of them. So right now, these two girls had committed an attempted murder and ran away. They were both missing, so the news was absolutely blowing up. Anissa and Morgan's parents didn't know that they had attempted to kill Peyton, and I don't think the news did either. All they knew was that a little girl had been found stabbed and two of her friends were missing, so... A lot of people were worried that maybe someone had taken them. So at this point, Anissa and Morgan had been walking for about five hours and it was kind of starting to set in what had happened. Anissa was saying that she wanted to go home and she wanted to call her mom. she just wanted this to be over with and Morgan was saying, well, you can't now because they'll throw you in jail forever. Morgan even said to Anissa that they might be executed for this. Anissa then blames Morgan for everything to her face and they both just start crying and start asking Slenderman to help them and obviously nothing happens. The girls were found sat on the side of the motorway after their five hour walk with a backpack with granola bars in, just some bits and also the knife. Morgan and Anissa's parents were told that their daughters would be taken to the police station to be questioned and Morgan's mum says that on the way they were talking about how they were going to punish her when she got home. They just didn't know how serious this was going to be. The girls were put in separate rooms for interviews and they act very differently to each other. Anissa more or less straight away um, before questioning has even really started asks if she can ask a question and they're like of course 
and then she's just like oh how far did I walk because I'm not usually that athletic so I just wondered and it's like you just stabbed someone like you you were there you were part of this why are you asking how far you walked it wasn't required by law to have parents present in their interviews I'm not sure if it is now but at the time it wasn't needed so neither of the girls had parents present and it's just because they feel people are more truthful when their mums and dads aren't there Neither of the girls lie in their interviews, they pretty much say straight up what happened but Morgan is definitely trying to push the blame more on Anissa than Tiga herself. It's always like, oh well I think Anissa told me to do that, I think Anissa said we should do this, oh it was just who Anissa was speaking about and they also explain all about Slenderman, they explain why they did this and Morgan's got no remorse and Issa's a little bit more scared about the whole situation. You can tell they're both in shock but Morgan is like, how, how can you distract? She's like sassy in a way. Sassy is like the wrong word. She's just kind of like, hmm, yeah well, we just stabbed her and then like she it's like she's acting in a way that's just what I get from it she seems to be playing it up in my opinion they described their final plan of killing Peyton as being like lionesses hunting down a zebra again it's playing up to that whole like oh we're like animals we're so cool oh it's just so so weird I feel like they're just both very shocked that they've actually done this and actually gone through with this and I think they just don't really know what to do with themselves. Morgan's saying am I gonna go to jail and am I gonna rot and die in there? She's also saying that when she was thinking about the plan she wanted to be locked up so she couldn't hurt Peyton but she also didn't want to make Anissa mad so it's a hard one because obviously you don't know what was discussed with them. The whole situation is obviously very wrong like don't stab anyone, don't stab your friend but like Morgan is very much pushing the blame on Anissa. Anissa is saying like Morgan did stab Peyton herself but she isn't completely to blame like I was part of the plan. She's honest in that way. Anissa may have orchestrated all these things, you just don't know. Miraculously Peyton was alright after her surgery, she survived. She'd been stabbed 19 times with a 5 inch blade and Miraculously, one of the stab wounds missed her heart by, it's described as being a human hair, like, width. If it had been that much more towards one of the arteries, she'd have had a lot of bleeding and she'd have had a massive heart attack and probably died within a minute. So, it was a really, like, slim chance of her surviving, but she did it. She is incredible. Leading up to the trial, the girls were assessed psychologically. It was found that Anissa had no signs of being a sociopath or a psychopath, but Morgan was diagnosed with schizophrenia and oppositional defiant disorder. Morgan's mum and dad were told about Morgan's diagnosis before she was, and they were the people to tell her. And her mum said that she'd been seeing things since she was three. She'd been reporting them, saying that there were ghosts who would pull her hair and bite her. And she'd say that she'd see things in her room when it was bedtime. But a lot of kids do that, so they didn't really think much of it. The psychologist who spoke in court said that Morgan had described one of her friends in school as being a pegasus. Like, she thought that this person was a pegasus. She also said that Snape from Harry Potter came into her room and was talking to her until three in the morning and said that she could see colours and that shapes in people's faces would change and distort. Morgan also said that she didn't care what the prison sentence was because she'd be able to use a mind control to be able to feel however she wants. One thing that came out was that Morgan's dad actually has schizophrenia and they never told Morgan about this so it makes more sense that she would have it if her dad had it because it's often you know passed on. When they searched Morgan's room they found loads of notebooks with drawings and stories about Slenderman in there. They also found that all of her Barbie dolls had big scars and wounds drawn on them she'd taken their arms off. The doctors at the trial say that it was because of her belief in Slenderman that led to the attempted murder of Peyton. 
Morgan and Anissa were tried as adults in 2017. Anissa got 25 years in an institution and Morgan got 40 years in a mental hospital. Peyton spoke out about a year ago and she said that she fully believes the girls thought Slenderman was real and she also agrees with the sentencing of both of them. And I just hope she's doing okay. So that's it for this case. I can't, I still can't get in my head like how strange this is. It scares me because surely this started out as some kind of like make believe in some game like oh do you think we should do this and then we can do this and kill her and do this and it's horrible to even think of that as being a game but what am I trying to say like when did it move from that to being real anyway I really hope you like this case I thought it was about time for a survivor story and I am so happy that Peyton is alive and well today I upload a new true crime video every single Sunday so like and subscribe all the good stuff leave a comment of what you thought about the case if you haven't already please follow me on Twitter and Instagram just because it's nice to have some people over there thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one